Hi everyone, my name is uh, Shahin. Today I'm presenting our work called uh, What Should You Know? Um, human in the Loop uh, Approach to Unknown Unknown. Uh, sorry. Okay. Unknown Unknown Characterization in Image Recognition. This is a joint work with my colleagues at uh, TU Delft. Okay, so first I would like to explain the motivation of this work. Uh, these days, AI-based models become uh, more integrated into our daily lives in a variety of domains, ranging from security uh, and healthcare to autonomous driving. As we increasingly rely on these uh, models for high-stakes decisions, identifying and characterizing their unexpected failures are uh, very critical. However, despite the huge success of uh, AI-based systems these days, uh, these existing uh, models suffer from a uh, severe issue of uh, reliability. For example, as shown in, th in this picture, uh, the perception model deployed on a self-driving car uh, identifies the content of ad image on the backside of a truck as a building or uh, electric pole with uh, high confidence. Uh, in the same domain, um, several studies shown that uh, safe driving cars have problems to classify people on wheelchairs as uh, pedestrians, which can lead to very serious problems. Therefore, identifying the unexpected failures in AI models is uh, very critical in order to make uh, reliable models. So we basically have uh, two types of uh, errors in almost all AI-based models. The first error type is called a known unknown, where the model makes predictions uh, with low confidence and uh, we are, as a developer of the model, aware of the model weakness. But on the other hand, the second type of errors, so-called unknown unknowns, are more uh, problematic and can lead to very uh, drastic consequences because the model make uh, wrong predictions with uh, high confidence. So unknown unknowns are often caused by systematic bias in the training data. As shown in the example, uh, the model has only seen a black dogs during the training phase, but it has no clue that the dogs could be white too. So recent works have uh, shown that unknown unknowns reside in certain partition of a feature space rather than distributing uh, distributed evenly across uh, all over the feature space. So these partitions are called uh, blind spots where uh, data points are highly correlated and often have the same feature deficiency. So Images are more than a collection of objects or attributes. They uh, usually represent a web of uh, relationships among uh, interconnected objects. Comparing to computer model, it's easy for human to recognize even complex images. The reason is that human mind perceives the world in a more uh, discrete way, uh, but computer models see the world more in a continuous form. Another reason is that the human mental model makes predictions more uh, semantically by taking the context into account, but computer models, on the other hand, predict uh, statistically and often ignore the context, contextual cues. For example, on the left side images, uh, the classification model has seen, uh, during a training phase, has seen uh, many sofa and TVs belonging to the class of living room. Therefore, it misclassifies the outdoor scene on the uh, bottom left corner as a living room. However, uh, for example, the traffic sign or trees appeared in the image should logically overrule the other objects in the image to, uh, uh, to identify uh, the image class. Similarly, on the right side, the model uh, misclassifies airport as a living room. However, it simply ignores the appearance of the plane in the background, which has higher relevancy to 
uh, to the class of airport uh, comparing to uh, objects which are related to the living room. So given the differences between the human mental model and computer models, we have a good opportunity to fill in gaps in computer models by uh, employing a cognitive capability of, uh, uh, of, of human. So uh, in this work, our research question is uh, how can we effectively and efficiently leverage human mental model to identify and uh, characterize unknown unknowns in image classification models? So to address this question, we identified several challenges. Um, first of all, we need to we need our model to operate on a data representation which is closer to human mental model. In other words, we must encode images in a way that uh, semantic information as well as the contextual information are preserved. Moreover, due to the uh, limitation in budget, we have to minimize the human effort. So with the, with the uh, minimal amount of human uh, effort, we need to find uh, a reasonable amount of unknown unknowns. And finally, we have to fully tap human contribution while uh, minimizing the cognitive load of a uh, human task. So uh, to address a uh, data representation problem, uh, I explained in the previous slide, uh, we integrated the scene graph as a new modality, which is a stru structured representation of images. Scene graph encode objects as nodes uh, connected uh, via pairways relations as edges. We basically uh, decompose the image uh, from a continuous form in pixel level in the form of uh, scene graphs, which is more discrete and close to human mental model. Scene graphs are very intuitive data representation for humans, but not for machines. Therefore, we should encode the scene graphs into a fixed um, length vector representation in such a way that uh, visual information as well as uh, semantic information are preserved. Uh, so inspired by recent works in uh, image captioning and visual question answering domain, uh, we developed a self-supervised scene graph encoder, uh, which aims to encode the scene graph uh, into vector embedding. And this vector embedding is used in the in the next uh, phase in our um, framework. So the second problem uh, we had to address uh, is scaling out our uh, approach um, because we often have a, limit, a limited budget for crowdsourcing. Therefore, we cannot find the blind spots by uh, searching the feature space exhaustively. So we hypothesized that the instances of a blind spot have common feature deficiencies. So if few samples from a highly feature correlated partition are identified as unknown unknown, uh, most of the instances in the same partition are very likely to be unknown unknown unknown. So based on this assumption, we formulated this problem as a sort of optimization problem. Um, in this optimization problem, our objective is to partition the feature space into n partitions, and n is uh, is a budget a number of requests to the um, human oracle, uh, where each partition is represented by the most representative sample from that partition, uh, where all other samples in the partition are very similar to each other. To solve this optimization problem, uh, we have developed uh, the genetic algorithm. Um, on the human task side, uh, we have designed two different human tasks. Uh, once we have the representative sample from the previous step, the semantic partitioning sampling step, um, which uh, really covers the, the feature space, we use human to analyze our sample. So we implemented a crowdsourcing application to collect uh, semantic information 
by which human recognize the images. As a human, we recognize scenes by looking at some particular objects. For example, we recognize a kitchen if there is a fridge or oven in the picture. These are the most important objects to identify a scene. So we ask crowd workers to weight the relevancy of uh, objects in a scene graph as well as the relationship between them with respect to the scene class. So the task, of, the, the human task is to, um, to bring some sort of a semantic in terms of the, uh, on top of the, the scene graph, um, which um, enrich the, the relevancy of the objects uh, with respect to the scene class. But the, in the other task, um, in order to see how much the understanding of the model, how the model sees the, the scene is aligned with the understanding of humans, we designed the second task where we ask crowd workers to annotate the attention map, the saliency map of, uh, of the model uh, generated by the model. Uh, in this heat map, the model shows that the model is paying attention to a particular uh, area in the image. And these uh, red parts on the, on the heat map uh, usually correspond to some particular objects or, or relationships. Then we ask the crowd workers to score the relevancy of these um, intersected areas uh, with, the, with the, uh, the possible object or relationship with respect to this uh, scene class. And here is the overall architecture architecture of our uh, framework. Uh, as the indexes shows um, on the figure, we have a feedback loop in our system where uh, we feed human mental uh, model or a human contribution back to the system in order to enrich the data representation and the enrich data representation leads to better um, partitioning of the feature space. And once we detect uh, one blind spot, one uh, unknown unknown instance, we can uh, identify blind spots by looking into the same uh, partition. So our pipeline basically takes a set of uh, test images as well as uh, the predictions of an image classifier on the test set. Then it outputs a set of blind spots as well as a description for, uh, for each blind spot. And the description represents a reasoning of uh, the model um, to, to make the prediction. Uh, we conducted our experiments on two uh, indoor scene data sets uh, in order to make sure that our proposed solution is capable of covering blind spots we train a scene classifier on a um, systematically biased training set. So um, in other words, we induce two types of bias in the training set manually. Um, and these biases are false positive and false negative, as uh, you can see uh, in the table. And for false positive, we select a concept, for example, person then we keep all data points that have the, this concept from um, a class like a, a kindergarten. Then we remove all instances with this concept from other classes. In this way, our model sees person only in the class of uh, kindergarten. So we compare the result of our uh, framework with five uh, baselines methods uh, on two data sets. Uh, our evaluation metrics are standard, uh, such as the precision recall and F1 score. The results show that our proposed framework achieves the best performance across all settings and specifically outperforms U, UB. It's a uh, state of the art in the uh, unknown detection by a significant margin of uh, 31% in, in one uh, F1 score. We also demonstrate that the performance of uh, performance on uncovering the exact reasoning of the model on unknown unknown images. 
uh, to the best of our knowledge, uh, our proposed framework is the only um, solution to mix, uh, which not only identifies detects the unknown unknowns, but uh, tries to describe it um, in, a, in a very intuitive way. And uh, as there are no other methods for addressing the characterization task, we only reflect on the performance of our framework in covering each uh, injected bias. Here is an example of uh, injected unknown unknown uh, detected and characterized by our framework. Um, for example, the upper row. Uh, Sorry, or F. the time is over. I, I'm almost done. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, so uh, these are the examples um, uh, detected by uh, our our approach, and um, yeah, we also did some uh, relation study. Uh, to to uh, evaluate each component in our framework, and uh, the details are are in a paper. Uh, you can always refer to the paper. And um, as a conclusion, we presented a human uh, in the loop um, uh, semantic analysis framework for characterizing and detecting unknown unknown image recognition model. We leverage human mental model to specify both. Um, uh, what the model should know and uh, describe what it really knows. And we scale out human contribution um, for detecting unknown unknown in large scale uh, data sets. Well, That's many it. Thank thanks. you so much for listening. Well, many thanks for your presentation. The work is very sure. nice. So questions for Shaheen. So I have one regarding to uh, the semantic space partitioning. So yes. here you are using a distance between the vectors that represent the two images, but it's not clear to me what is the role of semantics in this case, because when we think in terms of semantics, we have, we use either ontologies or we use knowledge graph in order to describe the meaning of these images. But if we are, when we are embedding, when you have these vectors, so how the semantics, how you can enrich this with semantics, with real, real semantics, for example, from domain specific ontologies or encyclopedic knowledge graph, as for example, the, Wikipedia or Wikidata. Have you considered en yeah. enhancing enhancing this vector uh, space representation of your images with real semantics that is coming from this knowledge graph or from ontologies where you could enrich the meaning of what have been identified? Or yeah, what? actually, that's a very relevant question. Um, as I said, uh, we try to, to generate a semantic aware representation learning. So uh, I think we have two types of semantic. You can use ontology or a very uh, methodological uh, way of bringing semantic into your uh, data representation. Uh, but in our case, we bring semantic uh, from, from human side. Uh, so we try to, to map a bridge between the human mental model and uh, our uh, graph representation and um, this is how we enrich that, our that's true but eventually see this is one source of semantics right but you can have other sources Indeed. of semantics and basically this community-based knowledge graph are encoding actually go, uh, the, the the knowledge of the community so that's why they are so rich so this is another type of source that you may consider in the future. So yeah, actually, I think yeah, we try to have, introduce time, a new uh, application. To, 